Supposing one's imagining that one has been born. What's the first impressions of the world, of this earth, this planet one would like to have? We're coming out of this birth canal, this tunnel, into the world for the very first time. First experience of the air, the first breath, first touch of the human hand, first contact with one's skin. If it was a nice day, if it was a really nice, warm day, I think I would prefer to be born out of doors. But if it was night, I couldn't imagine anything more delightful than to be born under the stars. How would you like to be born? What is it your first sample of the world you'd like to have? The white smell of antiseptics and instruments. The first contact with human beings being uh, that far rubber glove. First place one rests upon being a rubber or a plastic mattress. Where is the earth? Where is the air? It's not a single ordinary human touch of an ordinary human hand. Is this supposed to be an initiation into life so that uh, nothing else will be worse, so that uh, after one survived that, one can take anything? A lot of men and women think it's quite ridiculous that a baby is feeling anything when he or she is being born. I think that's complete nonsense, absolute complete nonsense. If we just look at the baby, we can have no doubt this is an exquisitely sensitive creature who's feeling every single bit of it. If we judge our civilization by what we do to assist this process, then it certainly looks to me to be one of the disaster areas of our culture. Only too often, the way a baby's born, especially in the best places, is a disruption of, an attack on, the senses of the baby in every respect. I've met many people, and I hear of many more than I've been able to meet individually, who are disrupted for life, it seems to me, as a result of, among other things, a disruption of the process of being born. All that horror isn't the whole story. Even now, there are millions of women who are managing to give birth to their children in ways that aren't warped, disrupted, or disruptive. And they can witness to the fact that the process of giving birth is one of the most tremendous and momentous experiences of life. This tremendous elation, which is like nothing on earth on, nothing else on earth. This marvelous, marvelous elation, and it, which makes you just want to jump out of that delivery bed and <laughs> hug the world and hug the baby, and you know. And I came home early. I came home within 48 hours of the birth of my baby. And you know, you hear all these tales about how agonising it is to make love. You know, when you've just had a baby. I felt so beautiful and so close. And I still, I didn't reach a down on my after this baby. I stayed on a high, and it was so beautiful to be at home with my husband in my own bed. Birth isn't the beginning of one's uh, life. Conception is the beginning of one's uh, life. And uh, a mother has gone through nine momentous months of uh, having this uh, uh, new uh, creature inside her. One of 
of those uh, watershed uh, experiences in life, one of the experiences when a woman is, is both most open and uh, by the same token most uh, vulnerable. Awareness of the nature of the experience, understood and explained in the, in the simplest terms, can be of far greater benefit than all sorts of uh, very costly drugs that are then used to attempt to uh, numb and calm a terrified creature who doesn't know what's happening to her. The chance to know in advance something of uh, uh, what is uh, about to happen ought to be um, the natural right of every woman. No woman should be expected to go into this ignorant of uh, the cataclysmic events that are, are going to happen. mother's taken away from the people she knows. Usually she hasn't met anyone who's going to deliver her child. She's taken away from her husband, from her own parents, from her own children, and taken to a completely strange place. And there she goes into a strange bed to encounter strange touches, smells, sights, sound. Thanks, Shay. Would you like to put your legs like a frog? Thanks, again. Thanks, <laughs> Just lift up a little bit so I can get your dress out of the way. Yes. That's good. Pop it down there. That's good. We just do a little half shave this time. Just that last little bit. Yes. You know? Why does the pubic hair of the mother have to be shaved? Disgusting practice. Deeply humiliating practice. Every woman feels humiliated by that. Who's ever told me about it? Uh, speaking as a doctor, I can, I, I can say that I don't know any medical reason why it has to be done, whatever. Mm -hmm. Hospital, in many parts of the world, is now the place you've got to go to to have a baby. But a hospital, in the minds of many people, not least uh, the hospital staff, is a place where people go when they're ill, when they've got a disease. Now, giving birth is not an illness, it's not a disease, it's an experience of great grandeur, it's awesome. There's nothing in itself to be frightened of. I feel that you can't talk to people in hospital. I found I could talk to my doctor before I went into hospital, but once I got in there, I, I couldn't talk to him anymore. The sister always came in with me, she probably meant well, but she answered all the questions for me. Everything just seemed so remote that I just bottled everything up. I wanted mm. to ask for help and I just don't think you get any. The next time I said to somebody, before I had the baby, please don't leave me alone, and I told them of the experience I'd had last time, and they were absolutely marvellous. Being left in the dark and given a bell and said, ring if you need me. Well, <laughs> I mean, you need them all the time, don't you? And, mm. and, you know, I had a husband that was prepared to stay with me, and they said, well, it'll be ours, go home. And he said, oh, no, I'd rather stay, and they said, oh, no, you can go home and have a good sleep. We'll ring you if your wife needs you. But they didn't. We were really working as a team and very close. And when they send him out of the room for various reasons, it's like almost to me like the baby being the cord being cut between the mother and the baby because you know they're one being and they, they cut them off. If your husband's sent out of the room, it just cuts your support and you're just shattered. You're at sea, you know, you really are in a strange place. It doesn't matter how strange it is as long as you've got that one rock to hold on to. I felt that when they were examining you internally, for example, very often um, they would just say, I'm going to do an internal examination. Now, you probably, um, 
you know, if you're reasonably <laughs> intelligent, you could work out that probably it was to see if the baby's head was big enough to get through the pelvis. But they didn't bother to tell you that this was what they were doing. Or even after they'd done the internal, they didn't say, well, yes, that's all right, and you could go away feeling relieved. You had to say, well, was, was that all right? Is everything going to be all right? And even then, there would be a non-committal, hmm, or something like this, and then they'd walk out of the cubicle, and you were left there feeling so helpless. And you feel so vulnerable when you're pregnant, because mm. you're so much in their hands. Now, as the mother goes in and quickly becomes a patient, now patients are very often not told anything uh, about either what's the matter with them or what uh, treatment they're going to get, because that's supposed to worry them. And therefore, in many places, when a woman goes uh, to hospital to have a, a baby, she's treated something like a patient who's uh, anaesthetised and then something is done to her. And her contribution to the process is very often felt as more interference than anything else. Don't do Everyone is treated as being rather a silly woman who can't cope with the knowledge of what's really going to happen to her. And, and when um, I was in labour, they used a drip and induction. They don't tell you about the induction. They don't tell you what's going to happen. You're just sort of cut into a theatre. And it's a feeling like being cast off to abattoirs or something like that. It was all very cold. Just relax. Let everything go, Liz. I'm just going to examine you through the vagina. Feels nice and right. mm. Just relax. Mm. Okay, I'm just going to use a little instrument to break the waters now. I'm just going to put a clip on now that clips onto baby's scalp. We can listen to the baby's heartbeat through the labour then. Not worrying at all? <laughs> <laughs> Not that much. Yeah, that's good. Why does uh, uh, is labour now so often have to be induced? Um, can't we wait? Can't we allow things to occur in their own time and their own rhythm? Why do chemical uh, chemicals have to be used uh, now sometimes routinely in order to control the whole course of labour, to control the whole rhythm and uh, uh, tempo and intensity of uh, uterine contractions. I said, well, explain. Why do I have to have it induced? Or he says, if the baby isn't getting enough nourishment, then it'll be malnourished and the birth will be hard on it. And I thought, yeah, that makes sense. I'll consider it. But why is he pressuring me? I said, well, look, could we, could we make it till next week? I don't mind waiting. I'm comfortable. And I said, if you can show me that the baby is being malnourished, I'll, I'll agree. But he kept getting very anxious about the birth and, and about the welfare. And I kept saying, well, I have nothing to do. I'm sitting at home. It doesn't bother me. Unless something goes wrong, I would prefer nature to take its course. Well, finally, after three weeks, I, I had to go into him twice in that last week. He says, um... No, I, I'm for induction. And he got so hot under the collar with my resistance that I finally said, look, maybe it'll be best if I went in and got induced. But it wasn't entirely, I wasn't entirely willing to do it at all. Anyway, with the last baby, I didn't want an induction, but it was a very difficult pregnancy. And on my weekly visit, three weeks before she was due, I told the doctor I was so tired, I just didn't see how I was going to deliver this child. And he said, um, well, don't worry about it, I'm going to ring up and make an appointment for an induction. And I just sat there and let him do it, and I didn't ask any questions or check or anything. And hers was a very difficult birth, and it was this constant labour, and a lot of the criteria my other doctor in New York had told me about weren't met. Um, her head wasn't engaged, and uh, she was very shocked at birth, and she was mm -hmm. cock-treated for 24 hours, and uh, it was just a horrible experience.
I felt more as if my uterus, or I was sort of the guinea pig. And I asked the doctor, why this time? I said, what has happened? And my birth the last time was far more natural. He said, well, this is more of a modern method. <laughs> so, and I felt sort of a total lack of involvement fr right from the word go. Um, and this is what has bothered me. And I felt so trapped. I don't like to feel trapped. I'm just going to put the ba this needle into the back of the one that's already there so that we can run the strip through. Just a painful procedure, isn't it? I'll tape it to the hand there. It's not too uncomfortable, is it? Yeah. I'm going to turn the pump up every half an hour. Because I wanted to start pushing quite early on and they didn't believe me and they gave me another shot of pethidine. So I still kept on and I really, really badly wanted to push and they wouldn't let me. And the nurses told me afterwards that in fact my doctor was playing golf and as he was a specialist, he had to be there when, I was, when the baby was born. And I was really disgusted. The whole experience was so awful because my baby was born lacking oxygen. He had to be rushed off to an oxygen tent, you know. Um, and I realised afterwards that, that he could have suffered brain damage. I mean, just, just all sorts of dreadful things. And it was purely for my doctor's convenience, you know. He wanted it to happen between nine and five, and he was late anyway because he was bloody well playing golf. I had stipulated an arrangement with my doctor because I felt very strongly on this that I did not want to be dopey when the baby was born, that I wanted to feel the baby being born because it, it's a very tender thing to feel the little head being born. It's just something very special. And also, my husband would be there. I didn't want to be dopey with him. I wanted to share the moment with him. Why does he have to be so often given a so-called pre-medication which only confuses her, drugs her, dazes her, and... Uh, prevents her from having uh, a full awareness uh, of the experience and uh, capacity to, to fully engage in the activity. Um, I thought I was coping quite well. Um, contractions were very very short and very close together, so I didn't sort of have much time to think. And suddenly a nurse came in and said, um, I'm giving you some pethidine, it'll make you feel better, jab in the middle of a contraction. And that was it, it was in. I didn't have any chance to say yes or no. And it did make me feel sad because I, I felt I was coping quite adequately at that stage. Now we're going to give you an injection that's going to take some of the pain away, OK? Routine medication which passes through the uterus, through the placenta and the cord and suffuses the infant as well as the mother so that uh, in many uh, places now it's almost routine for the baby to be more or less zonked when uh, he or she is born along with the mother. It goes in. Right? There. And that's as far as they went. They didn't try and explain to you why it was for your good. You know, like add a little story to it or something. They just say, oh, it's for your own good. Well, I like to know why it's for my own good. And, you know, you sort of don't get told. And I didn't know what was happening, and it was so panicky. My husband had had to go home. He was going to be with me. My husband had to go home because of it being Sunday, and he came back within four hours. I got into labour, and I went out again. I got really up to about two-minute contractions, and they gave me some medication, and I went back to ten minutes. Now, I'm going to inject the local anaesthetic, and this will feel cold up and down your back, all right? Try and lie still. Just lie still. That's very good. This will take away all your pains. Good, that's all. Just stay still for a minute. All chemicals at birth are in some way interfering with the uh, normal physiology of both parties and should only be resorted to if there is a real serious and particular reason for doing so and not be taken routinely. That's very good. That's the epidural catheter which stays in the epidural space. And that's the procedure over.